Hello guys, this is Dan and welcome back to the Swiss Network. Today in this second tutorial of my 2D logo series, sorry, um, we're going to be making the rest of our logo by exporting the paths that we're going to create now in Photoshop to Cinema 4D, which in there we're going to apply a throwsy effect to give it a really cool text effect, um, making our outcome look something like this, which is the other background, but I'll open it up now. Something like this, uh, which looks pretty awesome. So hopefully we'll be able to make that. Moving swiftly on, we're going to make parts of our text. I've already done this because it just takes a while. I have to pen to up the S because when I select the letters, the S always looks screwed up. So once you've made paths, you can simply just select your text if you wish by holding uh, Control and pressing the thumbnail. You get this, and then we come to paths and press this button down here, and it creates a new work file. Of course, I don't want to do that because I've individually done my paths. So once we've done that, we can just select our oh, we can just select our paths like so. Or can we? Um, I don't think what I'm doing. There we go. Uh, now we're going to go to File, Export, Paths to Illustrator, and we want to do all paths. OK, and we're going to do this as 2D logo to our desktop. Once that's saved, it should appear as an AI. 2D uh, AI file if you have Adobe Illustrator, if not, it should just be blank. So, once you've done that, you should have your logo. So, this is looking pretty awesome already. Uh, since we have it in Cinema 4D, now it's going to go to Extrude Nerves and take the paths out of their sort of shell, if it were be, or their null object, and drag all these into the Extrude Nerves. Now, if you have this sort of problem, which I get reoccurringly, where it only extrudes nerves on one letter, you just hit Hierarchical and it does all of them for you. I am now going to control C and control V this into another document. I'm just going to paste it into a Lightroom that I have uh, for my GFX pack. Like so. This is a previous attempt. Okay, so if I uh, put that in, like this, up a bit. There we go. So that's looking fairly awesome already. Once we've done that, we're just going to change the depth, uh, which is this one here, 20 centimeters. I'm going to change mine to 100. Of course, you can change it to any depth you wish. And then we're going to apply a fillet cap to the start and end radiuses, start and end uh, caps, a radius of 2, making sure the fillet type is set to engraved because it's sort of a beveled effect at the front. We're then going to create a material which I have somewhere in my material pack. I think it's, it's this material here. Uh, just color set to 24 on the R, G, and B, and there's a reflection with a, a reflection of 2%. So just add that onto your extrude nerves, and you should get like a grey color in here, but it should stay black. Once we have done this, uh, we're just going to select all the paths, and we're going to connect and delete the paths. Once we've done that, we're going to plugins, drowsy, drowsy, break it into 30 different pieces. And we should be able to just break that. Hopefully. Um, current state object. Break click. Group objects. Should break. Whoa. My mouse just went spastic. <coughs> I have no idea what's going on. Um, delete that one. Let's have this one. This should now break. Break now. Okay, why didn't it work? Make editable, there we go. Break now. And it should break, hopefully. Once you have the path selected. There you go. Break now. Now it's gonna break this into 30 different pieces, depending on the speed of your PC, depends on how long it will take to break. Uh, you should break it into 30 different pieces for use, like so. So I've only got one piece. Why is it on that? Oh. There we go. So we, uh, once we've done that, we close that and we can untick scene by camera, which should be set to off. By default, 
Then we go to MoGraph, Defector, and Random. Uh, once we're in here, we just want to set the strength to about 10%, as uh, that looks fairly cool. And um, we have this sort of effect going on here. If we scroll back to the top of our materials, you should see these materials saying cut inside, cut outside. We're going to come to the furthest one, which is cut inside on the furthest left. And then we can change the colours to a blue. What? Yeah, what in a minute? Oh, I'm doing something. So, under color, we're going to select a green. That's what I want. Uh, add apply a luminance. And select sort of another green. Just do that by eye. You don't have to copy any colors or anything. And we'll set this to about 20%. Apply reflection around like twenty percent. Texture for now about ten percent. Uh, changes to a object soft shadow. A glow with an outer strength of hundred percent, and then that should work perfectly, as you can see here. But I'm just going to adjust my camera angle here. Whoa. Make this look decent. And I'm going to change my cut inside to my previous material, which is a color of 24, 24, 24 on the RGB. Just give you this sort of color. And then apply a reflection of 2%. For now, 8%, I think. Something like that. Should work fine. And specular off. And that should be my cutting side. So that looks fairly cool. And once we've done that, we're just going to render it out. So that is pretty much the tutorial itself for this episode. I hope this has uh, helped you and you've enjoyed. Make sure you stay tuned for my third episode of this. We should be editing it in Photoshop. So this should give you pretty cool effects. Uh, once you have watched this video, please leave a like and subscribe for the next episode of this tutorial. It really helps us out. So thanks for watching, guys. That's a bye from me. Till next time.